Well, I, I worry about some of the um, things because I I have a great deal of respect for OPR. I've had a great deal of respect for it in Republican administrations and, and Democratic administrations, and I have relied in a lot of times in determining how I might vote on on issues that, not that I asked them for an opinion, but I've, I've looked at some of their opinions of what the law is as regards uh, other departments, but it is as regards the powers of the executive. And I, I've looked at a lot of those, but I made my own decisions how I might vote on an issue uh, coming up because I think of them as being uh, uh, the facts and the law objectively stated as it, as it should be. I would think any president would want that and would be better served. Now, the OPR report does not find the former acting head of OLC, Stephen Bradbury, to have violated a technical ethics standard. But I see his complicity in offering flimsy legal advice to justify the White House actions. In May of 2005, Mr. Bradbury wrote two memos to reaffirm the use of waterboarding. This was after the so-called torture memo had been leaked to the public and then withdrawn by the Bush administration. Still, Mr. Bradbury disregarded the concerns of senior uh, department officials like former Deputy Attorney General James Comey, who said that one of Bradbury's memos would come back to haunt the Department of Justice. Uh, Mr. Comey also said that the Attorney General, who is now Alberto Gonzalez, was under great pressure from the Vice President to issue these memos. And Mr. Comey was concerned that Mr. Bradbury, who was in an acting capacity as head of OLC, but was known to want the official job, would be susceptible to just that kind of uh, pressure. Now, on May 11th of last year, uh, Attorney General Holder issued a memorandum for the Department of Justice setting up a process for all requests for legal advice from the White House. It said the Assistant Attorney General for the Office of Legal Counsel shall report to the Attorney General, the Deputy Attorney General, any communications that in his or her view constitute improper attempts to influence the Office of Legal Counsel's legal opinion. I think that's a good start. Uh, but I'd urge you, and if you have thoughts on this, pass them on to me. What further steps Justice Department can, can make to protect us? Because the OLC is extremely important to us. It's extremely important no matter who is president. Extremely important to the, to the country. Uh, are there further things we can do to make sure its integrity is preserved? whether in this administration or future administrations? Well, I, I do think that uh, it, it starts with the leadership of the department, the attorney general and the deputy attorney general, making clear not just to the head of OLC, but the other lawyers working there, uh, that their role uh, must be an independent role and what you've already articulated, that if they ever perceive or feel like there's any effort to improperly influence that decision making that they need to take it to the deputy attorney general or the attorney general and it would be incumbent upon them to interact with the white house or if it's coming from a, another government agency whatever it may be to interact with the head of those agencies in order to address that problem thank you my staff has reminded me i said i have great respect for opr opinions obviously i meant olc that's what we were right discussing at the time well Mr. Grindler, I thank you for taking the time. There probably will be some follow-up questions, and I, I appreciate you, you being here. This is a, this may seem arcane to, to sum this discussion. I, I just feel very strongly about the integrity of the Department of Justice. You have some, as you know, some amazingly talented and dedicated men and women in the Department of Justice. I've known so many I've worked with over the years. I have no idea what their politics are. I don't really care. They're just extremely good, just like we see in the, our prosecutor's offices around the country, some remarkable 
men and women who at a great sacrifice serve this nation. And they serve the nation because it is a higher calling. I mean, this is a great nation. The Department of Justice is a great institution. If it hadn't been for the tugs I felt from my native state of Vermont, I would have accepted uh, the invite from Attorney General Kennedy. I, I don't know what life would have been otherwise, but I just want to get back home uh, to Vermont. But I've never forgotten that. I've never forgotten what was driven into me by my law school professors, many no longer with us, who said about how the Department of Justice has to be, has to have integrity, has to be independent. Uh, I see you in that mode, Mr. Grinnell, and I mean that as a compliment to you, sir. And, and we have to maintain it. Otherwise, how are you going to attract these remarkable men and women who serve there day in and day out? I agree with you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you. We'll stand recess.